Hi everyone, it's Zila and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a Northeastern Timeline video as you guys saw from the title. Um, but what that means is basically I'm just going to go through what kind of happens throughout the summer and during your first year and also give a bit of like tips and tricks with that. Um, because I know my first year I was a bit overwhelmed once I got into college and I didn't quite know what was going on. Northeastern sends out a bunch of emails and so it's kind of hard to like sift through all of that and just figure out whether you're missing anything or not and things like that and so I decided to make this video um, that kind of explains most likely what you'll have to look out for. Um, obviously it differs a little bit year by year especially these days because of the pandemic but hopefully this will at least make you feel a bit more prepared. But I did have to cut this video into two parts because I talk a lot and so this video will go over what happens over the summer and what you need to look out for and then my next video will go over what to look out for and also just more tips and tricks uh, throughout your first year and what that's going to look like. So let's just get started. But to just start with some background info, my name is Sue Lin. I'm a rising second year at Northeastern University. Um, my first year, I lived in East Village during my first semester and I was on campus. But then second semester, I came back home. And so I'm also home right now because it is the summer, so this isn't my dorm. But if you are interested in checking that out, I have a move-in vlog and a dorm tour. I don't know where they're gonna pop up, but they will be there. And the links will also be in the description box down below. Yeah. Let's Let's just get right into it. As a disclaimer, all of these dates are subject to change at any moment depending on the year, things like that, so this is definitely just a guide. Also I apologize for my lighting, the sun keeps getting covered and uncovered by clouds, so it just keeps going back and forth. So first things first, after you get your acceptance letter to Northeastern, which you can check through the admissions portal. So once you get your acceptance letter, your enrollment deposit is the thing that's basically going to confirm whether or not you're going to choose to go to Northeastern. And that is due May 1st. So I'd say that's a pretty good time. I think they usually release decisions by April 1st. So it does give you about a month to um, figure that out and decide whether you're going to go to Northeastern or not. But this is also when I want to talk about the appeals process because I do recommend appealing before the enrollment deposit is due. So if you're like me and you need more financial aid and you've received your financial letter and everything and it's not quite enough, you can always appeal. I'm not going to go into too much about like what to do for the appeals process, but basically if you didn't get enough financial aid um, from Northeastern, you can always appeal for more aid and so they'll reconsider how much aid they give you and see if they can give you more. For myself, I also did that. They couldn't necessarily give me more aid, but they found federal aid to give me, um, federal scholarships and things like that because the way that my FAFSA and CSS worked, it was a bit wonky with the situation that I was currently in. So they were able to find federal aid that I originally wasn't um, el eligible for. But most people may just need more aid or there may be a change in circumstances. For one thing, whether you actually have a change in circumstances or not, they will most likely make you fill out a change in circumstances form. And um, for that, if you don't really have a big change in circumstances, you can just kind of exaggerate the circumstance that you would like to. But the reason why I recommend to do it before May 1st, which is when the enrollment deposit is due, is because it's kind of like a bargaining chip. So you're saying that if you can give me more aid, I can attend. But if you already put down your enrollment deposit and basically confirm that you're going to Northeastern, regardless of whether or not you get any more aid, it kind of, I don't know if it harms your situation that much, but I definitely know it doesn't help. And so I do recommend students to appeal before their enrollment deposit is due. But after you get into Northeastern and you accept your admission and everything, you are going to start most likely thinking about what you need for college and everything like that. I will most likely put out a video later on about what I think you need to take to college. 
but one of the main things that you're going to be considering is a laptop this is especially because in high school at least in florida for sure they do give you a laptop to use and so a lot of students don't have their own or they use their parents laptop or like a home computer or something like that and so they've never actually had their own laptop but you will definitely definitely need one for college um you can find some recommendations here and there especially based on major if you're a major that like requires a specific laptop there's really no major that requires a specific lap laptop but for some majors it is helpful to have certain laptops with certain features but for the general student like myself i do recommend the xps 15 laptop this is a touch version but you don't necessarily need to get the touch laptop it is really nice to have a touch laptop though but if you're not looking for necessarily a laptop that's this big which this is still pretty medium sized but if you would like a much more portable one um there's the xps 13 one and if you want an even bigger screen there's also the xps 17. there's also a two-in-one laptop if you're into a laptop that can like fold over and turn into a tablet which can also actually be really helpful in college especially if you get like a stylus and so you can like write your notes but if you're looking for discounts you can use my link down below that'll take you to a page that has the most updated discounts and sales that dell is doing but we also have a Northeastern student website um, it, where if you go through that, it'll also apply some discounts for Northeastern students. So definitely check that out in the description box below. But since the Dell FPS 15 Touch laptop is the one that I have, I figured I would just talk about why I like it a little bit. The first thing is the Infinity S screen. I really like that the Dell FPS 15 maximizes its screen space and so it has a really thin edge. This is really nice because if you get the XPS 15 touch laptop, it completely maximizes the amount of screen space you have, especially in a pretty small laptop. Um, but if you want an even smaller laptop, the XPS 13 also has an infinity edge screen, and so that maximizes it as well. And so even if it's a smaller laptop, you get a pretty good amount of screen space. But the other thing is a touch screen. Like I mentioned, mine is touch. You don't have to necessarily get the touch. There are non-touch versions of the Dell XPS series, but I do recommend it because the touch is one, pretty cool to play with. Um, it's really simple, especially when I'm sitting down like this and talking to you, or I'm just doing stuff on my lap on the sofa or on my bed, I can just easily move around the screen, zoom in, things like that with my fingers. But also, it's nice when you're reading a textbook. I personally always get digital textbooks because they're cheaper, um, but also because I can put them on my tablet or my laptop or other devices and have access to them anywhere. And so I like to also have a touch screen for textbook reading so that I can just <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like when you don't have it, you don't think about it too often. But personally, because I'm so used to touchscreens, whether it's with my phone or tablet or etc., um, sometimes with my old laptop, which wasn't touchscreen, I would randomly just like try to scroll up with my finger and then groan at myself and my stupidity. But with, the, but with this laptop, I don't have to do that because it actually works. <laughs> but also, this has the new Intel Core i7 processor, which is super powerful. I use a bunch of softwares, especially as a previous design student, but also as a YouTuber. I use a lot of editing softwares. I use a lot of different softwares to work my machines for my sticker shop. So that's been really good. Uh, because it has a really powerful processor, my videos export a lot faster, which is one of the main things I've noticed but also this laptop is really good for creators like me if you're into YouTube or Instagram or whatever it is um, video editing things like that anything that you need an SD card slot for it does have an SD card slot which is really helpful and the last thing is how big the keyboard and the keypad is and the Dell XPS 15 touch laptop it varies depending on what specifications you get but the Dell XPS 15 laptop can go anywhere from a thousand dollars to two thousand dollars and so you can definitely choose all your specifications based on what you can afford but i do recommend the dogs ps line 
Okay, so the next thing is your housing application. That's due May 7th, which is everything from your LLC preference where you rank um, which LLC you prefer from one to three. And the roommate matching survey, which is on the housing application. It's just super general questions to make sure you at least don't have too many differences with the random roommate that you get placed with. But this is also when the roommate requests are due. And so if you find a roommate online, um, on Facebook, Instagram, etc. <laughs> you have to figure that out by May 7th. The one thing I will say about roommate requests is that I honestly personally think that whether you go random or whether you find someone online, it's still 50-50 either way. Um, the reason why I say that is because even the reason why I say that is because even if you find a roommate online, even if you talk a lot and text a lot and think you guys vibe really well, I will say one, it's really different to like someone and live with them, but two, people are a little different when you're talking to them online. The vibes they give off are a little different and some people will even speak a little differently than when they're in person. And so I will say it is still pretty much random because as much as you try to get to know this person before the due date, you most likely don't know them too well. Um, but if you are going to try to find a roommate, I do recommend trying to FaceTime them and stuff as well because at least that's somewhat closer to in-person physical interactions than texting. But the housing application also includes single requests. You are not guaranteed singles as a first year, but if you would like a single, you can put that you would like one. Um, it's not guaranteed, but if there are any singles, you will be the one to most likely get them. And then the next thing are medical needs. If you have any medical needs that requires a specific dorm, there are handicapped dorms available with like handicapped bathrooms and things like that. Um, so you do need to contact housing about that. And finally, the last thing is all gender housing preferences. That's also due by May 7th with the rest of your housing app, which is just online. You just submit it. I did want to explain this one just because I personally got confused during my first year as to what this referred to, but basically opting into all gender housing means that you'll be placed in a room, so your dorm, with um, someone who may not be the same gender as you. Not the hall, you'll already be placed with other genders within your hall. So that's what it means. Um, I'm sure all of you figured that out, but <laughs> for me I did get slightly confused and so I did just want to explain that. Okay, but the next thing is choosing your meal plan. That is due much later by September 18th. And so, th so that does give you some time experiencing um, the meal plan that you chose. But honestly, in general, I do recommend the lowest one. Currently, the lowest one is a 12 meal plan. It goes 12, 17, and then unlimited. Um, honestly, the meal plans are pretty overpriced and so Although you are required to have one during your first year, I don't recommend it for the rest of your years because shopping and doing your own groceries and cooking your own food will be much better. But because first years don't get kitchens, you are required to have a first meal, uh, first year meal plan. And so the lowest one is a 12 meal plan. I recommend going on that, especially if you're not sure of how much you eat and how much you'll need but once you get onto campus if you decide that you you know need a larger meal plan or if you got the 17th thing you'd, you'd eat a lot but then at the end of the week you end up having a lot of swipes left over you can just downgrade to the 12 meal plan before the 7th, September 18th due date but my tip here is that although you can't downgrade after the September 18th deadline you can always go up. So that's why I recommend doing the 12 meal plan because if you do need a while to figure out that you need a larger meal plan, just sticking with the 12 meal plan and then even if the September 18th deadline passes, you can always upgrade to a 17 or unlimited plan, but you can't downgrade from an unlimited plan or a 17 meal plan after the September 18th deadline. Now the next thing are Husky 101 emails and Husky happenings emails. Those are emails that the school will email you throughout the summer of your first year and that basically just includes any guides or tips or due dates that are coming up. Um, that's just how they'll be communicating to you, so I do recommend reading them. 
Oh, but before I continue, I did want to mention that as first year, you don't choose your housing. So you are randomly assigned your housing based on your LLC. And no, I don't recommend researching into previous LLCs and what buildings those were housed in because it does change everywhere, every year depending on how many students chose that LLC. Um, but this, but the only students that are allowed to choose their housing, which they're not even really choosing their housing, are honor students. They're just guaranteed the East Village building for their housing and they're required to live there. You can opt out of it if you decide to because it is the most expensive out of all of the buildings. But honor students are the only ones who are guaranteed a certain building. This year I did hear that because there are a lot of students, honors kids will be housed in both East Village and International Village. But you know, take that with a grain of salt, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so after that, around the end of May, your schedules may start showing up. It really depends on your advisor, so please don't freak out if everyone else is saying that they got their schedule already, but you don't have yours. So your first year, your advisor is the one who makes your schedule for you. You don't register for classes or anything like that, which can be really helpful. So once your schedule starts showing up, they will most likely email you around this time as well or start emailing you around this time as well about um, scheduling the mandatory first year advisor meeting because you are required to meet with them and you'll most likely want to anyway because you can talk to them about how many classes you'd like to take and how many co-ops you'd like to do, things like that. But also if you decide there's a class that they scheduled for that you would rather take a different class for, you can talk to them about that and in general talk to your advisor about any questions you have academic wise. Okay, and the next thing is Husky Connect. This is just virtual orientation because of the pandemic, so I don't know if they're going to continue it throughout the next year, um, throughout the next few years but this year they are having Husky Connect. I am an orientation leader myself. Um, so I do recommend Husky Connect because I am an orientation leader and that is where we do communicate with you about any events coming up, any meetings coming up and things like that. It isn't mandatory, so if you really, really don't want to do it and you're just not gonna participate if you do go to meetings, I don't recommend um, coming out to meetings or anything because they aren't required, so yeah. If you don't want to check Husky Connect at all, don't worry, but there are other um, cool events that happen during the summer on Husky Connect, things like student involvement fairs where you can check out clubs online um, and see what you know Northeastern has available for club options, things like that. But also you get to meet other students and interact with them. We do a lot of things like game nights, movie nights, things like that. So if you're interested in just and honestly, don't have much else to do over the summer anyway. I do recommend coming out to meetings and getting to know people, including myself, if you have me as an orientation leader. But Husky Connect launches June 1st. But the next thing is the health report form. Basically, that just confirms that you've gotten all of the immunizations that are required by Northeastern. This is due June 30th, but I would check it early on because I personally didn't have one of the immunizations. I honestly forgot what it was called, so I can't say which one, but I did have to go get that, um, which was also a little harder to do because it was during the pandemic. So I do recommend checking that out early so that you make sure you get all of the immunizations and you get it signed off by a doctor to confirm that you did get those immunizations but also this year they are requiring the COVID vaccine unless you have genuine religious reasons or health reasons but all students are required to be fully vaccinated on campus they will require you to like upload your vaccine card and everything um, so there are ways to confirm that and they will most likely email you about it so yeah the health report is due June 30th but I know they are pretty understanding about it especially recently because of the pandemic if you can't you know get to a doctor quickly enough and then the next thing are AP scores they are due June 30th as well so you do want to send them off by June 30th to Northeastern um, but again they're also understanding about that especially if AP scores don't even come out until after June 30th based on when your exam was and how much it got um, delayed because of the pandemic and then during the first week of July is most likely when your bill will come out um, Honestly, most likely for a lot of students, the bill will be wrong. Um, personally, for my bill, 
it just didn't include any of my financial aid and so it was expecting me to pay full tuition which I was definitely not doing and so if that happens to you just reach out to the financial aid office message the uh, email them and let them know that it was wrong um, the sooner you do this the better because it will take them a while to fix that and send out a new bill the first week of July is also when you can start opting out of NUSHP which is the Northeastern Health Plan Massachusetts does require all universities students to have health insurance which is why they automatically put you on NUSHP um, at Northeastern but you can opt out of it if you have a health insurance that's equivalent um, in what it covers like with your family or something like that or if you're like me and didn't want to pay Northeastern for health insurance Massachusetts has a really good free health insurance plan called Mass Health um, I'm not gonna go over I'm not gonna go in depth of what that covers and what the application process looks like but it is an equivalent of NUSHP so you can opt out of it if you get mass health which is completely free um, so if you're eligible for that I do recommend checking out mass health if you'd like me to explain more about that and the application process for that let me know down in the comments below and I may, may mention it and go over that process in another video and then the next thing is uploading your husky ID you'll most likely want to do this early on in the summer because at least starting last year they did start mailing you the ID so that you have it once you're on campus when you move in because you will need it to get into your building and things like that and they are also still requiring you to take a um, COVID test when you get onto campus for the first time so you will need that to also take that so I do recommend uploading your Husky ID. The photo ID is due July 9th so that they can mail it to you before then. If you miss that deadline, I think they'll just most likely make you, you know, get your picture once you're on campus, which can also be a bit of a hassle when you're moving in. So I just recommend it getting it in by the time, by the day it's due. The next thing is the mandatory Canvas course. Like I said, this is replacing orientation basically. So you should have gotten news about that mid-June and it is due by July 20th. And so if you don't do it, they will literally rescind your acceptance because you didn't do orientation, which is required every year, whether it's virtual or in person. Not the Husky Connect, but the Canvas course. So the next thing is something that a lot of students look forward to, which is housing assignments. These do come out pretty late. They come out late July, early August. Um, it slightly differs every year, but honestly, Northeastern's housing assignments usually come out this late. Um, yeah, so don't get stressed if all of your other friends who go to other schools are saying they already got their housing assignment. Northeastern is usually a lot later with theirs, so don't stress about it. You will get information about that late July, early August, and move-in dates are from August 29th to September 5th. So if you are someone like me who has to fly into Northeastern and Boston and wants to get their airplane ticket early so that you get cheaper rates you can just choose one of the dates in between August 29th and September 5th and go off of that because even if you do get a different move-in date once you're assigned one with your housing assignment information you can always request a different date and so it really doesn't matter which date you get um, because you can always request to change it to the one that you have a flight plan for but with your housing assignment that'll also be when uh, move-in rates update are updated on the northeastern site so you can see how much it'll cost to live in whatever building you're assigned you'll also get your roommate assignment as well as your move-in date assignment as well as like your address and everything last year it did come out in two separate emails basically at the same time so if it's not all in one email know that they'll most likely email you another one with the other information and finally your bill will most likely be due august 1st um, again if your bill is still wrong by that time by the time that time rolls around i would just email the financial aid office and let them know that it's still wrong especially if it's not an amount of money that you can still pay so like for me they wanted me to pay full tuition um, even though my financial aid covers a lot of the tuition and so I couldn't pay full tuition but if you're someone where it's just like two thousand dollars off or something like that and you're still able to pay it just go ahead and pay it especially if you don't want to stress out about it because later on you can just uh, request a refund through the the Northeastern portal for that they have a specific site for that and so you can just request a refund later on through that 
but that's actually it for the summer dates that's really it for the tips that I have I would just say don't stress I know it feels like you might have to do more than you think to prepare for the college for your first year of college but those dates are honestly mostly it from what I remember and from what I know um, but also I do recommend just you know being involved in some of the group chats um, joining some of the group chats at least for me that was where a lot of students would ask to eat lunch together or something especially the first few days you're on campus when you don't actually know anyone yet um, but also I do recommend joining Husky Connect and actually going out to some of the meetings and stuff because me but also it is a good opportunity to meet new people and the groups are made based on your college and so if you find someone with the with the same major as you you will most likely have classes together I pretty much met every single student who has the business and design major because we literally all had the same classes but that is it for dates to keep a look out for over the summer and so thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye!